Okay, Ed, I'm back. Okay. Okay, anybody want to say something to start this thing off? <laughs> Carrie's ready to answer questions. <laughs> yep, you get your questions ready just so we don't get a lot of dead air space. Um, um, we've we had a couple of awkward things happen this week. The, uh, the court, the uh, tax court, said that they didn't have jurisdiction, and so they were going to dismiss the case and charge us $500. Oh, really? <laughs> so I want you to understand what they said. They said they don't have jurisdiction, so they were going to use their no jurisdiction to charge us $500. And yeah. We're getting, a lot of that. we're getting a lot of that right now. And um, some of the things that I'm trying to do that's different is um, we're getting letters from the IRS, and the IRS uh, has a famous saying that they say that what we're saying is frivolous. So because it's frivolous, it charges $5,000. And so what uh -huh. we're doing, so what we're doing, or what I'm doing, is we're going back to the IRS, telling them, and, and I found that, and you sons of bitches, it doesn't really work, not for me. So I go back and tell them, thank you for your letter. You know, I say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a, uh, I'm in, um, I'm in the receipt of your letter, dated, whatever the date is. If I have a letter, CP letter, or you know, I tell them what it is. Um, I want to thank you for the letter, but there's a problem. The problem is your letter is frivolous, and the reason it's frivolous because you're telling me um, I didn't file a 1040 form, or they'll send you something in the mail saying you didn't file you didn't file your 1040 for 2017. Um, and so, and so then what I tell them is, huh? Uh, the reason I didn't file my, my 1040 form is the um, 1040 instruction booklet we, we um, um, uh, won't let me file it. It, it for forbids me from filing it. Um, so because your own booklet tells me I can't file it, you're telling me that I can. I'm confused. Therefore, your, your question is frivolous. I'm going to give you 21 days to remove me from any and all um, um, what would you call it? And in all, um, um, oh uh, shoot, what would you call it? Um, when you're not, when you're not part of it, um, in in all, yeah, yeah. Remove me from any and all records that you have pertaining to this year or that year or however many years you are on the grounds. What you're asking is illegal because. It's outside of your legal ability to ask, and then I send them uh, page one hundred of the uh, of the ten forty instruction booklet. Now we haven't heard back from them yet, so it's too early to say that 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 cut their legs off or not. But but uh, but they're not coming back very quickly. It used to be you write them a letter like that, they'd get right back to you in a couple of days. Uh, now it's been two or three months that we haven't heard back from them. And uh, page 100 of the 1040 instruction booklet is becoming a really, really hard hammer against them. And, and the reason we're doing it is the way I look at it is it says their legal right. Well, for those of you that don't, for you, those of you that don't understand, the opposite of legal is illegal. So I want you to think about this. You got to run uptown and pick up 600 pounds of child pornography. On the way home, you get pulled over. What would they do? Well, they would give you a ticket, put you in prison. Why? Because it's illegal. So if the IRS tells you to do something that's not within those three sections, they're telling you to run to town and pick up child pornography. So, or, or pick up uh, cocaine or heroin. What I'm saying to you is that's the argument that I'm using on them. And they, they're pulling their hair out. They don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. So uh, what we're doing is is uh, the other thing that I'm telling them is when we go meet them at their office, you know, I introduce myself, and then they ask me for an ID, then I ask them for their 
pocket commission. They don't want to give it up. So then uh, we sat there for a couple of minutes, you know, arguing back and forth about, um, you know, let me see your pocket commission. Well, we don't have to give it. Let me see your ID. Ditto. And then, what do you mean ditto? You know what ditto means? Well, let me explain it to you. Then I take about a three minute, um, and, and the guy that I'm with, he just, they start laughing, see, and they don't know what to do. So, so what I'm, what I start saying to the IRS agent is, excuse me, anything you say can and will be used against you. Then, then all of a sudden they just tell me it's time for me to leave. Well, we're doing that with about everything. You know, if, 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 you know, if, if, if they want to jack with us, and they seem to want to just jack with us. I don't know what it is, but 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 we're we're giving them an argument they're not used to. See? and so what we're doing is we're using Title Twenty Six against them, and they, and they don't know what to do about it now. We got them. We got them really frustrated in here. What were you going to say, Ed? <laughs> Hey, did they, did they ever put the correct OMB number on the 1040 form? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they did or not. Um, I don't think they did. But see, the problem is, let me tell you why that, again, you can, you can use that argument, but let me explain to you why that doesn't work. If anybody's interested, we're going to get them involved now. If anybody's interested in why that doesn't work, um, I can show you from experience, and I'll show it to you in black and white, where, that, where, Congress, where Congress tells you that won't work. If you're interested, come on, come on and ask the question. If you're not, then I'm, not, I'm just not going to tell you. But I'll show it to you before we go out of here. Is anybody out there? Anybody want to ask a question? <laughs> I hear something. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm scared why the OMB has no meat, no value anymore. Well, it's never had any value. Um, are you in front of a computer? Yes, but I can bear. I'm having trouble hearing you, really. So what? <laughs> okay, is that any better? A little He's bit. Kind of a little muffled. Okay. Okay. Um, um, okay, let me show you what, what let me show you what it says. I want to try to get rid of a lot of these myths because we're, I'm still struggling with people because they call me up when they want to know why this doesn't work. Um, if you're in front of a computer, go to Title One, Section One, and I'm going to show you where it says in there that that using the OMB numbers is incorrect. Is anybody in front of a computer? Yes, yes I. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay, go to Title One, Section One. And if anybody else is there, they, they're welcome to go online also and see it because um, it's going to be, you know, it, it's right here for, for our consumption. And so when you get it and open it up, it's going to be Title One, Section, words denoting number, gender, and so forth. Open that up, and then I'm going to go through that and show you. Where it actually says um, 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 the OMB number doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. Okay? Do you have? All right. Well, I got it up. Okay. Let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Let's read what it says, and I'm going to stop you. So don't. There's. No, we're not in a race here. So start reading it. I'm going to stop you. All right. In determining the meeting of any act of Congress. Unless Stop the right there. Hold on. Stop right, right there. Now, here, now, I'm going to read it to you the way it reads. It says, in determining the meaning of any act of Congress that has been enacted into positive law and has the right OMB number on it. Doesn't that say that right there? No. Oh, so here's what it says. In determining the meaning of any act of Congress... Title 26 was written by Congress. Title uh, 1040 instructions was written by Congress. The 1040 form was written by Congress. So now we got a problem. Now let's read that next, finish out that line, and then stop. Unless the context indicates otherwise, 
Okay, now, since it says, unless the context indicates otherwise, then it says, let me read it to you here what it says. In, unless the context indicates otherwise, you can use, um, you can use uh, uh, OMB numbers and you can use, uh, in, uh, it's not been enacted in positive law. It doesn't say that either. So I'm, a, I'm an ass. So I'm going to tell you, if it says red, it's red. It's not red-ish. It's not maroon. It's not almost red. If it says red, I take it as it means red, and that's what I hold them to. So in determining the meaning of any act of Congress, unless the context indicates otherwise. Now, let's read the next line. Words importing the singular include and apply to several persons, parties, or things. Okay. Words importing the plural includes the singular. Okay. Words importing the masculine gender includes. Can I the ask you a question? Why are you? Are we in a hurry here? You want, here, I can read faster than you. You want me to just go ahead and read it? What now? What does it mean? Words importing the singular include and apply to several persons, parties, or things. What does that mean? It means words have no value. I reckon. Okay. It's not that they don't have any value. It's that the words that you're, they're speaking to you, you're hearing one thing and something else is coming up. Now, let me show you an example of that, okay? I'm going, uh, to, ask question, I'm going to ask you a question. You answer it, and then I want you to ask me the same question and see if we get the same answer. Uh, what color, okay, what color is a red shirt? Red. Okay, ask me the same question. What color is a red shirt? Thank you for asking. To whom? Because, see, you said red. Is red Correct. My, okay, what happens, if I'm, what happens if I'm colorblind and I can't see red? What co well, see, now, unless we tell you otherwise, I'm going to ask him, what color is a red shirt? To whom? To you. Oh, a red shirt to me is green. Why, well, I don't see red. I can't see red. See the problem? We're answering the question before we know what it is otherwise. So right. What we're doing is, well, okay, so, well, the reason I don't have to file a 1040 form, it's got the wrong, it's got the wrong OMB number on it. Again, let's go back to Title I. This is the first title, first section, first rattle out of the box. This pertains to all 50 titles. See? The determining the meaning of any act of Congress, that's Congress. Unless they tell you otherwise. What color is a red shirt? Red. Oh. Okay, then what? Now, now you got, do you see the problem you have now? You're defending a red shirt, yet I can find somebody, wonder if the man's blind. How about this? You get a guy that's blind. What color is a red shirt to a blind guy? You said red. Well, I'm going to bring in ten red, uh, blind guys, put them on the stand and ask them. They're going to tell me, well, it's black. Now what are you going to do? Well, wait a minute. I thought you meant... Doesn't matter what you thought. Does that make sense? Hello? Does that make sense? Well, uh, not really, but I got somebody beeping in on me, which is a bogus call that I have no concern with hearing, so. Okay. But yeah, I can. See, when I asked you the, okay. Then yeah, but what, what we're getting at, or what I got from talking with you so far and reading uh, United States Code Title One, Section Word, Section One, is that words have no actual meaning. Nope, they have a, They do have a meaning. They do have a meaning, but you have to ask what the meaning is. Now, let me show you. I'm born in Michigan. In Michigan, we say, you guys. What do you say in, in the state here, and what do you say? Y'all. Okay. Now, you guys means I, I, I expose myself to the neighbor lady, and I run around the outside of the house naked. Is that what y'all means? <laughs> Not by my definition. Well, see, there, well, wait a minute. I don't care about your definition. We're in trouble with the IRS, and you're answering questions. See, here would have been the best answer to say. I don't know what does you guys mean so I can answer it. See? Okay. You guys, see, you guys is a slang. 
See, what we're doing is we're answering the question just like they want it. The other problem that I'm having is I'm getting a lot of TMI. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. The gentleman that I'm talking to, I'm not picking on him. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. But do you file the 1040 form? Probably not in over 20 years. Okay. Do you see what you just did? Not Probably not in 20 years. What you did is TMI. Now, I've got a two-hour argument in front of a jury. Right, right. What you, see, ask me the same question. Have you filed a 1040? I didn't. That's not, I have no idea. It's not time to file one yet. You asked me, did you file one? It ain't time to file one. See, now you're going to... I'm going to make you ask the question to where you get the answer. See, that's not what I asked. See, do you file a 1040? That's the question they'll always ask. Not do you file a 1040? No. Sir, you're too loud. Well, I, he, they were saying they couldn't hear me. I'm sorry. If I'm too loud, is that better? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I thought they couldn't hear me, that's why. No, not you, the other guy that's answering you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, do you, do we, you still, we still can't one? hear you, Carrie. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. <laughs> okay, do, do you understand what I mean by that now? Okay, I'm going to yes. ask a question. Okay, I'm going to ask a question generically. Please, I want to, I want somebody to answer it. Okay, I want you to have the most. I'm giving you the first choice. You get the most. Pick the very, very most. I'm giving you a choice between 30 or 3. You want the most. Which one do you want? And then I'm going to make you defend it. Okay, um, I didn't say anything what, about silence. Okay, what I, does thirty stand for? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it, it's, it's less than thirty-one and more than twenty-nine. So you want to have the most. You want to collect the most. You want to get the most. You want thirty or do you want three? Is three more than thirty? You tell me. I'm asking you. See, now you want to do it. That was brilliant. Do you see that? Okay. So what? All right. my question to you is what do you think is more, 30 or 3? All I'm going to do is say why, and then I'll explain it to you. That's why what you just said, see how valuable that is? But yet when I asked you what color is a red shirt, you said red. Well, it is red to some people. To a blind guy, it ain't red. See, to, to somebody who's outside in a snowstorm, with, when it's got snow packed on it, it might not be red. So there's conditions when a red shirt's not red. That's why we ask. Now, you want the most. Do you want 30 or do you want three? Which one is the most? I don't know. You have to tell me. Okay, let me finish the story. We're playing poker. Aces have one spot on them. So if you have three aces, you have three. Tens have ten spots on them. If you have three tens, you have 30. Which one's the most? 30. Really? So three tens is bigger and larger and more than three aces in a poker game? Well, I understood you to say they were, uh, had three eights, which would be 27 oh. instead of 30. According no, to my calculation, no, which... I said, okay, an ace has one spot. So if you have three aces, you have three. There's the three. Three tens is 30. You're playing poker. Which one's the most? It's the aces. See, that's why I do what I do. That's why I'm trying to show you, instead of TMI, too much information, when they ask me one question, they get one answer. They might have to ask six questions to get one answer. But because I do, that protects me unless we tell you otherwise. Doesn't that make sense?
Now, do you understand why uh, the OMB number on the 1040 makes no difference? Because you can ask them, does the OMB make a difference? When, they, when you ask them and they tell you, well, yeah, well, it's not the right one. Now it would make a difference because I'm going to make them tell me otherwise. For me to just uh, assume it, then it doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to pick something that I can always have sure footing. Does anybody else have a question that I could ask for them, answer for them? Now, I don't have all the answers. I only have them the way I think. I only have them the way I do stuff. If you have a question, then I would like to try my best to answer it for you so that we can get some of this stuff that we have, that we can start turning around the evil that we have. So uh, I have the order from the United States Tax Court. Do I order uh, certified copies? I mean, <clears throat> that would be a question I'd like to ask. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Do you want a certified copy? Well, I think it'd be handy. I'm looking online here. Okay, then, then, Go ahead. then I would then I would do that. But I would if you're going to do it, get more than one. Now, you how long have you had your uh, court order? Uh, it was March fourth. Okay, so you've had it a while. Okay, now do not you do not have to put your name in there. All you have to do is where you where you anywhere your name's going to be put, you can say me. If you would, would you read it so they can understand how we're building the cornerstone of this argument that we have with them? We're trying to build you a foundation that will hold the, 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 the storm that they're going to try to throw at you. But we've got some pretty deep anchors now that, that we are really, they are really, really frustrated. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, I got a well, call. You did, really good. you did really good if you could. They wanted to charge 25000 for me and my wife, and we thwarted that with the letter that okay. we sent. Okay. So, so, so you didn't have to pay the 25000 or you did have to pay it? I was dismissed. The judge dismissed that. It's in this order, he said. So, so was that bad or good? I thought it was great from my point of view. Okay, see? So, see, there's, there's somebody that's using it, and they're using it proper. See, the problem that we have, we're so stuck on what we used to say or what we're used to saying that I'm coming up with something that doesn't make sense to you, and I'm trying to show you. Can you imagine when they see it for the first time? It's, you know, they don't know what to do. See, I... I And you went out there for a little bit. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Okay. Do, do you see what you did? You saved fifty thousand dollars. Did you not? Yes. And, and that had and the okay. judgment in my favor. In my favor, me and my, and my wife's. Okay. So now let me ask you a question. What if it was a hundred thousand each? You would have saved two hundred thousand, wouldn't you? Well, they didn't have authority, so uh, you know. Ah, but that's not what I asked you. See, there's that TMI. You answer the question and then you come back. Always answer the question that's asked. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. See, because what you did now, now I'm going to say, oh, well, what did they say? Well, when did they say? Who said it? How long did it say? See, you're going to end up burying yourself, and you're going to end up saying something. You're going to say, God, I shouldn't have said that. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay, now let me ask you a question, okay? Um, um, I'm going to be a little bit ugly here, but okay. Does a fart stink? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. does, a fart, does a fart stink? To who? See how simple that is? Well, to me, absolutely. Does it does it fart does a fart stink to my baby? I don't know. I can't see do you see how that shuts that off right now? Do yep. you see that or you don't? Okay. That's what I'm trying to do right there. See? Well, you did good. I'm just wondering what the next phase would be, what what to do with all this. I'd like okay. to do some stuff. Okay, well, whatever you want to do, 
I don't care. You do whatever you want to do because now you have the hammer in your hand. You've got the club in your hand. You have it. Why? Because you've got... Now, if you... The guy that got his in March, would you get it out? I want to ask a question about it. Number one, who... I'm not... Go ahead. Who, who told you they didn't have jurisdiction? Uh, Commissioner of Internal Revenue has responded. See that? Ain't that something? This didn't come from the janitor. This didn't come from the judge. This came from the commissioner. So if an IRS agent says you, well, that ain't what it means, that means we can sue him and subpoena the uh, commissioner who's his boss because he's saying the boss doesn't know what he's saying. That's how I'm using it. See, when I write a letter to him, I'll say something. I'm just using, I'm saying something. I got a letter. Uh, you didn't file a tax return or you did something. You don't this. According to the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service, I put a parenthesis, the boss said they don't have jurisdiction. See Exhibit A. Then I mail it back. Let them tell me that's not what it says. Because as soon as they tell me that's not what it says, you cannot sue the IRS or the agent in the United States District Court because the United States District Court doesn't have jurisdiction on the IMF. But you can sue them if they lie. So they lied and said that's not what it says. Now, I can, I can take my, my, my court order or my court lawsuit to the federal district court under a federal question. The question is, Your Honor, is it okay if the IRS agent lies to, 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 to uh, advance his agenda? See? Because he said it, that's not what it says, but yet the commissioner said so. So what we're doing is we're able to take what they say and motivate us or manipulate it works to our advantage. See, when when the uh, when the IRS sends a letter saying, "Well, that's a, you, your 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 question or your answer or your letter or your whatever your your whatever it is is frivolous," my answer is, "Well, of course it's frivolous. It's frivolous because you told me to do a 1040. See, now I turn that around. Everything they say can and will be used against them." So if they tell me that my letter is frivolous, well, of course it's frivolous. You sent me a letter in the mail saying that I had to uh, stick my left finger in my right eye. That doesn't make it. That's frivolous. But I'll answer you. So you're right. It is frivolous because of your letter that prompted me to answer it. It's frivolous. Now, I've got something that I can build according to 6001, 6011, 6012 a what you're asking me is outside of your legal right. Therefore, the only way I can take it is what you're doing is you're pushing something illegal. When I go to the federal court, I can ask the federal judge, is it okay if the IRS uh, tells me to um, sell child pornography? Can, I, can he tell me to do that? Is it okay if the, uh, if the, uh, if the uh, IRS agent tells me to sell cocaine? Is that okay? That's illegal. Can they do that? See, I don't use those harsh words, but, but can the IRS agent tell me to do something that's illegal? Can they do that? Well, of course they can. Now I got them because on page 100 of the 1040, it tells me anything outside of this area is illegal. See? Now I got them. Does that make any sense to anybody? Does that make any sense to anybody? Yes, it does. So, no, okay. The guy that said yes, it does. May I ask you a question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. What color is a banana? 
Depends on how ripe. See how simple that was? Because if you say yellow, I would ask you, well, is it possible to have a green one? Well, yeah. So you lied. You lie not, did you lie all the time or just here? Is it possible to have a brown one? Well, yeah. Is it possible to have a black one? Yeah. So what you have is that's exactly the answer you have to tell them. Could they be yellow? Yeah. So there's four colors that a banana can be. I can't answer that until they tell me otherwise. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to diffuse them. See what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, does anybody have a question? Yes, I got, I got one I'd like to throw in there. What about uh, tell them you have the common law right to lie in accordance to Briscoe v. LaHue, 460 U.S. 325, and what I get from reading that court ruling, you cannot be penalized for perjury, so why are you even asking me anything? Okay, again, here's what I would tell them. I agree with you. Let's go to the common law court. We'll talk to the common law judge. No problem. See, I'm going to use, let me say this, anything they say can and will be used against them by me. So under common law, good. I didn't know we were under common law. I thought I was under Title 26. That's a statute. Duh. So if a statute, huh, then I don't have to pay taxes because you're under common law. That's what I would do. Then I would take over, and I would take over the conversation, and I'd beat the man to death with it. That's what I would do. See, because if we're under common law, cool. Under common law, the Constitution says you can't, um, you can't uh, attack my income. Under the under common law, the con see now I'm going to use the Constitution on it. The reason we can't use the Constitution because we're under the statutes. I don't care what they use. See, so under common law, they can lie. That's perfect, bud. That's perfect. See, no problem. See, then I'm going to take that. Then I'm going to take him to the federal district court under common law. He's done under common law, but yet he's telling me that I owe money on my income taxes <clears throat> because of Title 26, 6104.326.1 AGQ, whatever. So how can I? So my question is, how do you stand on a boat and stand on the dry ground? at the same time. What, you don't see a problem with that? Put one leg in the boat and one leg on the, on the dock. What's going to happen? Nothing? The well, you're going to hope a wave don't come and shake the boat. Okay, that's what I do to them. See, instead of saying, oh, my God, they're lying, them sons of bitches, don't do that. I agree with you, bud. Thank you. I can't owe taxes under common law because the Constitution says. Well, we're not using the Constitution. Oh, so then we're using common law? Yeah, that's the Constitution. I, gotta, I can hold the guy there. I can hold him on the ground for the next four hours arguing uh, what he's trying to tell me. See, I, it, it makes no difference to me. That's all. See what I'm saying? Well, what about United States Code, Title 18, Section 8, the definition of obligations if we're not, we're, we're not receiving any actual payment, receiving obligations? Okay. Um, the, uh, the, again, that's a statute, isn't it? That's not common law. That has nothing to do with diddly squat if they're under common law. Under common law, the Constitution says you can't. You can't uh, you, you can't tax my income or whatever it says. The, the one says you you can't tax their um, um, numeration or whatever it says. So under Title eighteen, Section eight, it it tells you obligations. Now Title eighteen, that's the title that has nothing to do with common law. See, I wouldn't use that. What I would use, see, what I would use is I use what I got to use at that moment. See, the judge told me that um, I have to pay, I had to pay something. And I said, golly, what do you want me to pay? And he said, U.S. currency. I said, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. So I went to the bank, took a check, 
laid the check on the counter and asked the teller, I want U.S. currency for this check. This check is for $327.09. There's my bank account. I want U.S. currency for that. She gave me Federal Reserve notes, so I sued the judge. Because he's saying, you, see? See, just like I, see? It doesn't matter what he says. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? See, anything they say can and will be used against you. The problem we're having is, well, when I was uh, 30, I was told that the OMB was wrong, so I'm going to use that. See? Well, if it doesn't work, let's double down on it. See, you see what I'm saying? I'm going to drag race this Mustang. The Mustang's beat me nine times in a row, but I'm going to go ahead and double down see if I can get all my money back. Apparently, I can't beat him. So why would you leave? Why would you do that again? He's the same car on the same street on the same side of the road in the same car. To me, that makes stupidity. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go take it home, put a new engine in my car. Or I'm going to get a different car. I got to I got to do something different. See, and that's what I'm doing. I hope that did that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So if they're using common law, use common law. You can tear their head off with it. That's great. That's really what we're after. We're at. We're, we're we want common law. Well, I just said that because that is what is stated in that Supreme Court ruling. You have the common law right to lie. You cannot be penalized for perjury. That is in, like I said, Briscoe v. LaHue, 460 U.S. 325. Okay. Then then you can't. Then if it were me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fill out. What I would do is where they, if you're going to do a 1040 form, do the 1040 form and write that case on there. Da, 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 da. I can't be held liable because of the under penalties of perjury. I put that put that case there. Anything you do with them, get that case printed out or on, on your thing. Use that case against them. Um, if you have to go to court and they say, raise your right hand. Well, I, can I lie? No. Well, it says right here I can. See? In other words, there you go. See? I ask questions. See, I never tell them anything. When I go to court, I ask. I'll start asking questions. And before I'm done, they'll throw me out because I've asked too many questions. That's what they tell me. See, I'm only going to tell you what I did. I'm not telling you that this will work for you. I'm, not, I'm telling you what I did. I got a ticket. When I got to the courthouse, I asked the court, does this court have jurisdiction? The judge said, yes. Can I see it? He said, no. I said, okay, then let me understand. This court has jurisdiction, so this is a traffic code court because I got a traffic ticket. Is that what you're saying? He looked at me, looked at the prosecuting attorney, and goes, uh, "I guess." Then i i have the i have the um, i have the um, what is it? The uh, Texas um, traffic code. What is it called? Um, uh, manual. What is it called? Help me out here. I got the uh, traffic code printed out. It's 54 point something. I go to the page and say, okay, let me read this to you. On the page so-and-so, blind so-and-so, it says the traffic code is for commercial use only. So, now, I've already said transportation. Transportation code. There you go. Okay, transportation. See, okay, what I do is I set it up when I walk in the door. I don't get, you know, um, so the, the guy that was telling me about that common law lie, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Okay, when you walk into the courtroom and the judge, t uh, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, it's going to be several, but how do you give the court jurisdiction? How do I give it jurisdiction? So how do you give jurisdiction to the court? Okay, I don't think by being silent gives it to them. That's my opinion. Uh, I started to say just by entering, but then again, if they don't have jurisdiction, they don't have it, I can't give it to them. Okay, so see, so there's already one plus for you. When you go to the courthouse, see, now, they're, they're going to tell you to, to come up there, raise your right hand and plead. Tell me how you plead. Now, you got to plead or they're going to get you for contempt. How do you plead? Okay, by well, I don't understand the charges. Okay. Uh, you were speeding. You're going 35 and a 20. How do you plead? What's the evidence? Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and you're in contempt of court. We're going to give you 90 days. Next. 
and you're you're gone. See, yeah. trying to argue something you can't win. When I go there, he asks me how I plea. I say innocent to proven guilty, without exception. The judge always says we don't have that plea here. So what I say is, huh? When I asked you first if you had jurisdiction, you said yes. The Constitution says I'm innocent or proven guilty. I'm confused. I object. And I sit down. I'm done. Because they said they had it. Now they couldn't prove it. Now they're saying I don't have it. I'm confused. I could care less. So, in most cases, what the judge does to me, he says, well, I'm going to ask you, how do you plead? I said, I'm innocent or proven guilty. He says, we don't have that plea. We have guilty, not guilty, no low contender. I said, wow, that's really weird because I'm not any of those. So what the judge said was, I'm going to enter a plea for you. I said, if you do, I will object. He said, I'm going to plea not guilty. I said, I'm going to object because I'm not, not guilty. I'm innocent. The judge says, that's the same thing. I said, perfect. Now you can do it. So the judge looks over at the prosecutor or whoever that is and says, I, I, Judge Soto, enter a plea of not guilty. I stood up and said, thank you. Packed my stuff and headed to the back door. He said, where are you going? I said, well, Your Honor, an innocent man don't have to be in court. <laughs> and you said it's the same thing. On the way out, he was so pissed, I stopped outside just to see what he was going to do. The next guy that came up to the judge said, how do you plead? He said, like that guy did. Oh, it was a zoo. It was an absolute zoo. See? I give them stuff that they don't see coming. Now, if the Constitution says I am, I am innocent until proven guilty, if they don't have it, they're telling me then, then I'm in the wrong court. See? I'm, I, I, I set it up up front. See? I don't care about anything else. I'm just telling you what I do. Don't do it if you're not comfortable with it. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, and I really do. Does anybody else have a question? Okay. I'm going to shift gears to taxes. Does anybody on the call tonight have an IRS issue of any kind? Okay, then we got them all. Hot dog. We got them all. Now, we don't have an IRS question. We got a question about taxes on our homes. Well, let me try to explain it to you. On your home, does your, is your home got a homestead on it? No. Okay. If, okay. What you have to understand, in order for the state to put, to give you, to tax your home, they have to have jurisdiction, correct? Correct. All right. Um, do you know what the word uh, is? If somebody a whole lot of noise, Ed, you can't uh, get them out. Somebody needs to mute. There you go. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. All right. Here's, here's what you're going to have to do. Now, what they're doing is, is do you know what the word form, F-O-R-M, form means? Does anybody know what the word form is? You do a 1040 form, you do a 1041 form, you do a 1099 form, you do a W-4 form, uh, you, do an, uh, you, know, you do a form to go down to the garage. You do, in other words, we fill forms out all the time. You do a doctor's form. Tell me what the word form means, the legal definition of form, and then I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing and, and then give you some guidance on it and see if, if it's what you want to do. Well, then it doesn't really matter. I can't help you because you don't even, you know, everybody knows what a form is. Since, since everybody knows what a form is, um, then use a form on them. Fill out the form and send it through. Does that answer your question? The legal structure. Okay. The guy that said that, that's, you're not bad. Would you... Do you have a black saw dictionary? Or if anybody is in front of a computer, put in the word F-O-R-M, definition, black law. And I'm going to show you how devious that they've done. And, and I'm going to show you what they've done 
deliberately, and I'm going to show you how to get around it, how to break their back on it. Will somebody go on the computer or look it up in Black's Law Dictionary, the word form, definition of Black's Law Dictionary? I have it for you. All right, go ahead. A model or skeleton of an instrument to be used Stop. in a judicial... Go ahead. Come on now. So it's a model or skeleton of an instrument. So a form is not what you think it is. It's an instrument. Do you see how the whole... Now, it's a model or skeleton of an instrument. It's changed. In other words, it's no longer a form. It's an instrument to be used in a judicial proceeding. That is a court of law. Now... Let's pick it up from there and let's finish it out. And I'm going to explain it to you and how I, what I'm doing. Go ahead, do it again. Finish it's it. a model, a form, a model or skeleton of an instrument to be used in a judicial proceeding, containing principal necessary matters, the proper technical terms or phrases, and whatever else is necessary to make it formally correct, arranged okay. in proper. Go ahead. Go ahead. Arranged. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Oh, arranged in proper and methodical order, and capable of being adapted to the circumstances of the specific. Now, if you would, <clears throat> we're going to tie these two together, and I'm going to show you how what they're doing to us. For those of you that didn't know it, that's what we have. If you would put an instrument definition. Black's Law. Now we're going to show you what one is, because it's telling you it's an instrument. See what I'm saying? Okay. Now, we got to understand this. It goes back to this is the jurisdictional thing that I, I've become uh, active in. Now, when you get that, I want you to read it, and then I'm going to stop you along the way so I can show you what they're doing to us, and then I'm going to show you what I'm doing to circumvent all this. I'm ready when you are. Go right ahead and read it. Uh, legal instrument is a legal term of art that is used for any formally executed written document that can be formally attributed to its author, records, and formally expresses a legal enforceable act, process, or contractual duty, obligation, or right and therefore evidences that act, process, or agreement. So, did you know that's what a form was? It's a contract obligation, I guess. Okay, it's also a will. It, uh, see, in other words, it, when you do a 1040 form, you got a contract unilaterally with the Internal Revenue Service that you're going to define something such as income. Now, uh, I want you to put that on hold for just a minute because what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to ask you, do you know what income is? You're paying, you got to pay in, you got to pay taxes on your income. So does, do you know what income is? Would you define it for me? And then I'm going to show it to you what Congress calls it. Well, that, what Congress calls income is a gift or a or uh, bequeathment, a gift, that's a true. Gift okay, see? So that's part of the reason this is going this way. So what you have is, um, so so what I have done is I said, huh, they have a 1040 and it works really well. So I made my own form. I have a form and I call it a 1020. Now, you can call it anything you want, 777, a 9241. But the word form, F-O-R-M, is on there, and that's important because my 1020 form goes in there and asks the county certain questions. Now it's an instrument to be used in a court of law. If they don't fill it out, I can use it against them. If they fill it out, I can use it against them, and I put that right in there. This form is a legal binding document. If you don't fill it out, you agree with the legal binding document. Now it's an instrument. I can take that instrument into court and say, they're asking me to pay them with something, and I don't understand it. I'm not an attorney, so they wouldn't fill out the form that they were obligated to. Now, the 1040 has a 1040 form, and then they put an instruction booklet with it. 
I do a 1020 form and I do a cover letter. My cover letter, I tell them, uh, I get my 10, my 1020 looks very similar to a 1040. And, it, and it's got questions on it that they're supposed to fill out. Then it tells them to sign it on the penalties of perjury, return this to, just like I do the 1040. Then I take my 1020 instructions and I tell them, this 1020 form is a legal binding document. I am ready, willing, and able to pay the property tax in question. But I don't understand because I am not an attorney and I'm not a tax assessor collector. If you refuse to answer any of the, the word, uh, any of the questions on the 1020 form, that is your determination that the, that the, the, the alleged taxes on the property were done by mistake, and there is nothing by me owed on property at at at. Um, Third block, uh, hundred feet. I do the meets and bounds on on the on the um, on the ten twenty instructions, uh, and then I mail that as a package and I send it with a what do you call it? Where, where there's a tracking number on it. I get certified registered. Well, I just do it with a tracking number, whatever that takes. I, you know, I don't do much mailings. But then I tell them in there, I'm giving you, I'm giving you 30 days. At the end of the 30 days, you agree with this binding contract. Then I do a fault, and the reason I do the fault because I'm giving you this fault in case you changed your mind. If you don't answer the fault, you have agreed twice with the binding contract. Then I do a third time. I do the default. Take the default down to the county, have it stamped. And I write a cover letter saying, with this default, uh, property taxes, school taxes, jack leg taxes, whatever taxes are paid in full by the binding contract of the 1020 form that you refuse to file. I mail that to them. Now, I've got something. If I'm sued, when I go to court, I'm not, I'm not standing there butt naked. I Can I ask you a question, Gary? Can I ask you a question about that? So now, uh, me and you did this. This is Lance from Minnesota. Um, I had to pay him because the sheriff was coming out, but could I still now get that stamped and request a refund now at this point in time? Yes. Uh, she had met in the letter she received the 1020 three times. I mean, I, she responded. Right. See, what the problem is, they think they're above the law. See? And what I do on mine, as soon as I send them the default, I, I tell them in there, I file a lawsuit against the county immediately. In other words, before the, before the ink dries, if they get it on Friday, my default Saturday, I'm filing a lawsuit. And the reason for it is I, I, I already know these people, and I'm trying to keep myself from getting into trouble, and it's all about, see, if the, if the court's involved, it's, a le it's legal. I can't make a legal determination. They won't let me. See? So so you, there, there's another thing you can put in your cover letter. If you don't answer me, you're saying that, the, that not being an attorney, I can make a legal determination, and I determine that, that. See, what I try to do is get as many bites on your side as I can so that when you file your lawsuit against the county, they don't have anywhere to go because they're going but he did, but he did, but whoa, I did all that. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I wrote in the notes on the check I had to pay him with 18 USC. I forget what exactly which ones, but it was where they can't accept it. But they took the check and cashed it anyway. <laughs> right. See, now, see, now you've got a suit against them. <clears throat> and if you have to, take them to federal court because that's a federal statute. So when mm. you lose them, do it I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get with you and put that together. I think that'll be fine. But what you have to do, see, is is you have to go ahead and 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 now that you have that, you can go and and, and file. But but where the problem, the biggest problem I'm having is whew, they backed off of me now, so that we sit down and go home and drink a beer and watch the football game. Well, I, I, they shut the court up down where they're selling us the COVID. So I couldn't do anything. But the sheriff was still involved. 
But see, that's not true. You can't do anything. You can mail it to them. Yeah, that's true. I did. I did, but the sheriff was still heading out, so I still had the notice of uh, sheriff mail. Right. I understand. See, but but that what you have to do then is what you do is you sue the county, and when you do sue the sheriff, see, make him an accomplice. See, uh, uh, what you have to do is sometimes you have to get, see, we have to get creative with them. See, they don't know what to do with the 10 points. And the reason they don't know what to do with it, because, see, what what's happening is they don't understand what to do with it because they've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. See, now, let me tell you how effective it is, okay? I now have a process that I was thinking about for people to get a checking account without a Social Security number. Now, it's been very effective. It's extremely effective. I guess we got 35 out of 35 by following the instructions. They just do not know what to do. They're, the bank is just beside themselves. Okay? So does anybody have any questions? Thank you for that. I appreciate that. If you want to get with me on it, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get with you and, and we'll, we'll come up with a strategy and we'll just work the strategy. Sounds good. So Thank you. Could we go right, to the risk management? There you go. Go to the risk management. There you go. Sue the risk management. See, in fact, okay. if you know who the risk management is, you can go ahead and maybe get them involved. Uh, um, maybe bring risk management in it instead of the, the, the tax assessor. I mean the tax assessor because he sends that's, me the ticket. That's the same name. Now, in Texas, it's risk management. In other in other states is tax assessor, so okay. you know, I'm going to speak to the risk so, management. I have a situation here. I'm not, of course, I'm not giving legal advice, but that's pretty much what I've done. And then, of course, you take you see them, you sue them in their um, private capacity, the judge, well, because when you, when I gave him the 1020 form, he just just well, what is this? I'm like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he was like, "Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little comment," and he caught me off guard. But um, yeah. he went ahead and sent the. He closed the case, having the plaintiff responsible for the five grand plus the fees, the court fees. No, so what pretty I much. Did, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. They made me put up a twenty-five. They made me put up a fifteen thousand dollar bond. So what I did is I took my 1020 and I altered it and I made a bond out of my 1020 for 25000 told them that uh, here's my bond. And what happened was the, the prosecutor never said anything to me. So the judge has nothing to say. So when we started, when we started the, um, the trial, the, the attorney said, well, we don't, no, we don't want this bond. I said, it's too late. You, I have to, you. You have ten days to either accept or deny. And if you deny, then you accept it. The problem is, I get a bond hearing. Well, they didn't know what to do with me. So, so I wrote my own bond, and uh, I ended up going there. And the judge said, "Look, this is just so screwed up." He said, "I don't even know what we're doing." He said, "We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do a um, uh, a continuance on this, and it's been eleven months." So I don't know what they're going to do because because they won't give me my bond back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go into the county and sue the county to get my $25,000 back. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm just doing things that's not normal. And they don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I did file a 1020. It was on record. Good for you. Good for you see, <coughs> now, now you, it's a form. <coughs> Excuse me here, hold on. <coughs> it's a form, so it's a model or skeleton of it's an instrument. Now you can call it back. Once you file it in the court, you can call it back. And you can call it back and use it in the in your court case if necessary. So it might be a good idea to file it. Well if the yeah. assessor accepted it, it'd be an instrument too, wouldn't it? Whether they accept yeah. or reject it. There you go. See, you see. Once you see, but but what it says, it's a model or skeleton of an instrument to be used in the court of law. So that's what I've done. 
I lay it out. It looks like just like a 1040. I go there and mm -hmm. I file it. I file it in the case. Now it's now it's now it's considered a court document. They mm -hmm. can't not, they can't reject it now. Mm -hmm. So that is my whole argument. When we get to the court, wait a second now. See, I asked the judge. I said, well, "You said I owed just you, you said I owed nine hundred and fifty-one. Um, I'm pretty willing and able to pay it today, but we, I've got a." Uh, 1020 form that hasn't been signed, so on the way out, what do I leave him? He, he says, that the judge tells me, he says, okay, um, we want money. I said, not a problem. Thank you so very much. I want to thank you for your service. I said, with that money that you want, can I buy property with it? He said, yes. I said, no problem. Would you give me two weeks? He said, absolutely. So I went home and took $951 out of my Monopoly set, went back, put it in an envelope, and gave it to him. He said, what's this? I said, you said to buy property. I said, Board wants property. Therefore, that's property, and that will pay for the property. He looked at me, and said, the judge said, you son of a bitch. I said, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And he took it, put it down, and I left. I never heard another word from him. So, so what I try to do, see, I never tell them anything. I ask questions. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> yes, because you're in control. You're in control. The, the, person that, the person that starts the questions off is the one that's in control of the Correct. pretty much. The lady that, okay, the lady that's speaking right there, can I ask you a question? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Are you married? No. Okay. So you've never had Who a job? Who wants to know? Sorry. Who Two, wants to know? Wait. Okay. So you've never had a job? So, you, so, so you're, you're on this phone call tonight because you want something for free. So you're one of the people that just take from everybody. Is that what you're saying? You've never had a job? You asked me Hello? if I was married? Okay. See? I asked you if you were married. You said no. Have you ever heard the word, um, I'm, I'm married to my job? Unless... I tell you otherwise. See? Ask me the same question so I can show you what I would have said. Are you married? Um, have you ever <laughs> have you ever been married? Okay. Well, have I ever been married? I don't know. I'm confused. I had a job when I was 19. Mm -hmm. okay. And I had three, goats, three uh, chickens and, uh, and, a, and a tractor on the farm. <laughs> the question you ask doesn't make sense, so that's why my question doesn't make sense. I'll ask you again: Have you are you are you married? I don't know. I've never had a job. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. What does married mean? Never. Mind. I'm confused. What is married? Yeah, what is married? Mean? Don't see now because I'm asking the question. If you answer it, I'm going to alter the answer so that I win, no matter what. That's, that's, the, that's the quickest way to do it right there. See? 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 Yeah. That, but that's, that's just what I do. And, and that's the reason why I, I, I'm in a lot of trouble with them because they don't, they don't really like i got a courthouse here that when I get a ticket, i got to call the judge. And he said, okay, it's dismissed. They won't even let me in because every time I go in, I, I, make, such as, I make such a fiasco out of it, they won't even let me in. I, I, if I walk in the door, I'm arrested. I got, I got a document that says so, so I just don't go in there. So if I get a ticket in my precinct, I tell them, hey, uh, judge, um, I got a ticket. Who is this? Terry. Okay, it's dismissed. Don't even go in. Thank you. <laughs> he won't, they won't let me in the courtroom. So if, wow. I, need a license, if I need a license plate for my truck, um, uh, I either have to wear glasses, a big nose, and a mustache, go in there, or I have to... Um, I have to uh, pay somebody to go in and get for me because I cannot go in the courthouse. Because they say when I'm in there I make too much of a I make too much of a scene. Does anybody have any questions? I got a comment I'd like <coughs> like to make. Hey, go right ahead and make it. Uh let's do on property taxes. I a few years ago when I was just maybe starting to get into trying to learn stuff, I wrote the tax assessor collector asking by what authority they were holding me liable to pay property tax or something like that. You know, it's been years ago. And a reply I got was something like, all, uh, all taxpayers in Texas own, that own property are required to pay property tax. 
and uh, something like that. And since then, I've read court ruling state citizens are not taxpayers. And since then, I've read uh, the definition for in this state by the Texas Tax Code, uh, Section 151.004, in this state. In this state means within the exterior limits of Texas and includes all territory within these limits ceded to or owned by the United States. Okay. Now, let me just tell you this. I have 39 cases in Dallas, Fort Worth, that are off the tax rolls because they don't know what to do with it. So we have 39 cases that have been removed. They don't even get a tax. Uh, right. They don't even... Okay, and the reason they don't, because you got to understand something. Have you ever have you ever heard of it? I'm going to give you a statement. Tell me if you've ever heard of it. Have you ever heard of land taxes? No. Okay, so so it must be something in it. Again, let's go back to the words. Look up the word property in Black's Law Dictionary. Black, in, in Black's Law Dictionary, property or its intimate domain says property cannot be owned. It can only be rented. Now, I want you to think of this. If our government goes to war and they enter the draft, why can they draft your children or my children, boys? Or why, how can they draft a kid? How, how can they do that? Tell me how they can draft somebody and put them in the military, put a gun in their hand and drop them over, over, overseas. How can they do that? I do not know. Okay, if they sign up for services? Absolutely no, no. If they're drafted, no. if they're drafted, we do not have a draft right now, but if they re-implement the draft, how do they get the kids to, to go to court? I mean, go to war. Because... Your child is no more by definition than property. Property is owned by the government. So the government me? Oh my God! It pisses me. See, so what happens is, is you've got to get your property out of the situation of property, or you have to use an alternative method. Um, I don't care what all that other stuff says. I'm not saying it's not important. It's maybe important to make you understand. Right. But as long as you call yourself property, as long as you say property tax, in Texas it says you can't have, there's no such thing as ad belong taxes. Yet when you get your bill in the mail, it says ad belong. But, but what they're doing is how we're stopping it is the first, the first time you get it in the mail in Texas, it says um, statement. Do not pay this statement. Now, if you wait 30 days, the statement becomes a, a a bill, a bill has to be paid. So my uh, theory is, why don't we attack it as soon as you get it as a statement? So we attack it immediately because the statement has no dollar signs on it. Since it has no dollar signs on it, I attack it with my 1020. If I get if I get my statement on Saturday, Monday my 1020 goes out immediately. And I call it a statement. In this statement, I'm confused. I'm not an attorney. There's something missing. Help me out. And I build my whole case on the statement. Now I've answered the statement. I don't get it time. See, I don't give it time to become something else. See, look up the word statement in Black's Law Dictionary. They do this stuff on purpose. See, uh, if, if they can't put statement on, on land. They can't on property. So I never call my property. So what we're doing is we're we're coming we're cutting through all this by using their own language. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Here's the next question. Um, I, I want you to think about this for a minute. Um, I very I got to be careful so I don't offend anybody. But but um, okay. Does anybody on this uh, call tonight? Are you a, a man or a woman of color or know anybody that's a man or a woman of color or has a friend that's a man or a woman that's of color? This is not, I'm not going to get into all that, but I want to know, does anybody know anybody, a person of color? Would you come on and say, I do, so I can ask you some questions about it to see if you really do?
Okay. I'll take it for that that nobody knows anybody, a person of color. Okay. The lady that was just on here, can I ask you a question? Hello, ma'am? Yes, sir. You can. Okay. Sorry, I have to woman? mute myself. <laughs> That's okay. Are you, are you a woman of color? No. I mean, okay. um, well, what it, color? It, it's too late now, isn't it? See, you said no. It doesn't matter what color. You said you're not a woman of color. Now, I want you, I'm going to ask you what the definition of black is. Would you tell me what the definition of black is? Okay. Absence of all color. So a black person would not be a person of no color. What's the definition of white? A reflection of all color. So if you're white, you're a woman of color. So I'm assuming by your, your answer saying no that you're black. Is that, would that be a proper statement? No. Uh, no, I'm... Do you see the problem we've been framed on? Look up the, look up the word black in, 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 in the dictionary. It's the absence of all color. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. If you're looking at a television set, a colored TV set, and Mickey Mouse walks out onto the set, what color would Mickey Mouse be on a colored television set? <laughs> All right. Can I make I don't want question? Mickey Mouse, and I don't know who Mickey Mouse is, actually. <laughs> let, okay. Let me ask you this. On a black and white TV, what color is Mickey Mouse on a black and white TV? I don't know. I, I, I don't watch Mickey Mouse. What is Mickey Mouse? Because I really don't know. Okay. Does anybody know so if they can help her? So let's bring her up into the 21st century. Does anybody know who Mickey Mouse is? And on a black and white TV, what color is Mickey Mouse on a black and white TV? Can anybody help me? What it be? He's a Disney cartoon character. Okay, what color is he when? What color is he on a black and white TV? Uh, would he be white then? Well, here's the problem. What is that, sir? What color? What color is Mickey Mouse on a black and white TV? I'm going to show. I'm trying to show you what we're doing is what we're doing and how how what we're doing. Okay, let me explain it to you this way. Mickey Mouse doesn't exist. He's a cartoon character. So if um. Mickey Mouse. So if you believe in Mickey Mouse, do you believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Two Thirty Two? See, that's the problem we have. You told me you were not a woman of color, but you're not black. Now, I'm confused. See, now, I can, I can screw you up so bad that you're going to confess to the murder of, of uh, whatever. I'm going to have you confessing to the bank robbery. Why? Because I've got you so confused, and that's what they're doing to us. We're admitting to things we did or didn't do because we're so confused, because we're hearing words, and we don't have a clue what they're saying, and we think that they're not doing anything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what we have to be careful of. Now, before I go, um, if anybody is interested in getting a... a, so, uh, a um, a checking account at, at a bank that does, and you don't want to use a social security number uh, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll explain the process to you and if, if you have time to talk about it that'd be great well I, I it's up to you guys because we're pushing uh, let me see we have we have a few minutes okay let me explain it to you what I do and how it works I go to the bank when I go in there I never press. I'm very relaxed and laid back, and I basically say, um, I'm trying to open a checking account. Um, can I do that here? They're very nice. Well, of course. Then I go into the office and sit down, or I stand up, or I sit my thumb up my bottom side, whatever they ask me to do. I sit there, and, they, and they'll, they'll ask me questions. But I try to ask them questions also. Here's the questions that I ask at the same time they're asking me. They're going to ask me for my first name, my last name, my address, my phone number. That's what they're going to ask me. And during that time, I'm going to ask them, wow, um, I, I, I don't see a, a law firm in this 
branch. Or if I do, is that the law firm? It doesn't matter what I do, but I ask them who the law firm is. They'll give that to me because I want me to get a checking account. I've never been asked why yet, but if they ask me why, I would say something to this effect. Wow, I don't have any money, but if I ever do, I want to make sure I'm protected. See, I constantly give them the, uh, the red herring. I throw them off, constantly throw them off. Then I'm going to say, they're going to say your name, I give it to them. Then I'm going to say, wow, since you don't have a, a, a law firm in-house, do, do you use one local? Well, yeah, we use uh, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Oh, so do we cheat them and how? Is that the is that the one right over here? I'm like, yes, that's our that's the one we use. I've got everything that I need now. They'll ask me, did they get down to that? Can I have your social security number? Oh, uh, why do you want that? Again, I ask. I don't say, well, you, you can't have it because it, 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 I don't go in. I, I say, oh, why do you need that? They're going to tell me. The bank's policy says you have to have one. Then my answer is, oh, we have a problem. My religion says the social security number is the mark of the beast, and we are forbidden to use it by my religion. And then I shut my mouth. They don't know what to do now. Well, then we can't give you one. Okay, so you can't give me one because of my religion. Is that what you're saying? No. We're saying we... We can't give you one because you won't give us a social security number. My, ch my religion says I can't use one because it's, it's the mark of the beast. Then I hand them that I already have pre-printed the First Amendment of the United States. Highlighted. Then I, them, then I give them the Texas Constitution that says freedom of religion. And I hand that to them. They just gave me <laughs> Dewey's Cheatham and Howe. So I've got the law firm that I need. I usually don't get one that time, so I will leave and say, well, thank you so much. I write a letter to the, to the attorneys, and I basically say, I want to see a, one of your banks that you represent. And they told me that I could not have an account there because of my religion. Is it the bank's policy to, to, to uh, be prejudiced prejudicial against a man's color, creed, sexual orientation, and religion. Is that the is that the policy of the bank? And I send it to him. That's what they always say. Have I lost you? What do you think the what do you think the attorneys at the bank said? No. Do they respond? Do they respond at all? One hundred percent of the time. If they don't, I, I write them again. And I tell them the next time I'm a little harsher. I went to the bank on or about such and such a day. I'm trying to get an account. They told me I could not have one because of my religion. Is it the bank's policy to to uh, be prejudicial against color? Sexual orientation, um, uh, uh, religion. religion. There, there you go. And then send it to them. They write back and say, no, the bank does not do that. Now I got them. So then what I do is I take the letter that the court, that the, uh, the attorney gave me, and I go back and say, we had a problem last time. And then I hand them the letter and I say, now we got a problem. You're violating my First Amendment, my religious right. And on my First Amendment, I have on there, then, it, then on the bottom, I print the First Amendment, then I put it. This is the um, supreme law of the land, and I highlight that. And I, I have it laminated on one side, I turned it over, and I got the Texas one on the back, so that one sheet covers both. So what I do is I go at it as a religion. So then when the, when the attorneys say, well, what religion are you? Well, I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing, cross-loving, Christ-following. Why? Does that matter? <laughs> See, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tip my hand. So, if the worst comes to worst, if I file a lawsuit against the bank, which I've never had to do, but if I do, I'm going to do it on the grounds that they have openly. Um, 
um, uh, discriminate, that's what it is, you discriminate against, and then uh, you have openly discriminated against my religion, which is against the Constitution. And uh, so far, I have never had to do anything. I just tell the attorneys that. The attorneys then call the bank. They'll say, which one was it? It's not important which one it was. I'll tell you. I'll tell you as soon as you answer my question. I'm not going to tell you. Let them call over there, and then they come back and try to twist it. You tell me right now if that's the bank's policy, because if it isn't, you'll find out in court. They always tell me no. Now I got them. Because, see, what, what then I say, okay, well, uh, the bank on 1st and 3rd, downtown Dallas, 76881, whatever it is, they're the ones that told me I could not have a bank account because of my religion. See, now they got a problem. And the reason I came up with that is um, I'm a contractor, and I was working at the airport, and I was, I was working in Houston at the Intercontinental Airport, we were doing some work there. We were there about 10.30 at night. This man, this guy, this older guy, uh, I don't know, 50-ish, he come running up to the dock, uh, up to the thing, because I'm running behind on my on my, um, plane tip, my, my flight. So he gives them the thing. He said, oh, you got about 20 minutes. He went through, the, he, went through he took his shoes off, his belt, you know. He went through the, uh, what do you call it, the, the uh, metal detector, and it buzzed. It went off. So they said, come on over here, and he says, and they wanded him. He was fine, but when they wanded his, he had one of those, um, looked like a cone, but it was had circles on it. I don't even know what it's called. But when he when he wanded it, that went off. It made the it made the the alarm or the uh, metal detector go off. The guy said, well, Allah says you can't look under there. So the guy said, kind of touch it. He said, go ahead. So he went up there and he pushed his hand on it, and he said, okay, go ahead. So the man I saw with my eyes get on the airplane, and he went through the metal detector, and the metal detector went off, and they did not look under his hat. And I'm not saying this to be um, um, uh, uh, offensive in any way. I saw with my own eyes, and I said, by God, there's my answer. The next day, I went and got my first bank account without a Social Security number, and I got four more since then. So I have four. And um, we, everybody that I run with now has one from different banks, and don't matter what bank, because I'm not getting it because you can't ask for a Social Security number because of Title 18, Section 426, or because of the so, so, because of I don't I don't do that. I go in there and ask them. Then when they get to the problem they've created, I let them know that 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 I cannot give it to you. I religion. And I ask them, so it's, so it's this bank's policy to refuse checking accounts because of the religion that they have. Well, no, not really. Okay, then, so we got a problem. Well, I Gary, give it to you. Yes. You got five minutes. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. So does anybody have a question? We have five minutes. Oh, I can answer one or two more if you're interested what if, in anything. What if they got your land listed as a partial? All right. Look up partial and black law ditch. Might get that might give you a that might give you a way. See what you have to do is is that would be your way in. See, uh, go in there and make, file some paperwork as the as your partial is not partial. It's land. See, if you're going to go and do, if you start to look up the different words, you'll find, you'll find something that they file in their own language. They don't use the English language. They use legalese. That's Black's Law Dictionary or Bovier's. Go to Half Price Books. They have them there all the time. I buy them all the time. You know, if you get a hardback, they're only 5 or $6. If you get a softback, they're 20 So just go in and buy you one. And that way you can become familiar with them. And how I started this is I had a friend of mine would write would write 10 words on a piece of paper and fax it to me because we didn't have uh, internet then. And so then I would take Black's Law Dictionary out and I would hand define each one and fax it back. As soon as he got it, it would come another 10. And I would, I would hand write them. And I was so amazed at it because just before we go, there's... Um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to give you a state a sentence, and I want you to tell me what the differences are. Okay, you must file a 1040. 
you may file the 1040. What's the difference in those two sentences? Okay, nobody knows? Well, one's an order uh, to obey, and the other one is like a, a suggestion? No. no, if you look in Black's Law Dictionary, it says must. Oh, okay. I'm hearing the Must means may in Black's Law Dictionary. So what it does is one sounds voluntary and one sounds mandatory. They're the same. So now all you got to do is figure out which one they're talking about. See, and I'm going to use it to my advantage. So what I'm trying to tell you is they mean the same thing. See, so what we have to do is we have to understand this going in and make them tell you otherwise. I hope you learned something tonight. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. Did good. Okay, folks. Gary. Oh. Uh, you can, next you can stop the recording. Will, what was that? Our next recording will be the 28th. <laughs> Thank you. Our next call. All right. Bye. I was uh, I was wondering if anybody made it from my Lighthouse Law Club tonight. I invited a couple of people. Well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. A yeah, good group of people I work with there, and I hope that couple made it on your call tonight for the first time. Thank you very much, Carrie. Oh, my pleasure, and thank you for being here. All right.